turn now, Brittany? Yep. So yesterday, we did the first part where we figured out that B was tetraatomic and then A had to be diatomic. So if B is tetraatomic, it must always be tetraatomic. So that means in the second experiment, B must be tetraatomic. Now it says that we've got four volumes of C, <coughs> one volume of B, and we know that we must have the same number of particles in each box, because that's what Avogadro's law states. So if there's one particle in this box, we must have one particle in those boxes. Now remember, the number of atoms is not the same thing as the number of particles. So Megan, how many particles are in this box? One. Four atoms, but only one particle because they're all attached. So I've got four B atoms. Here I put one atom in each box. It should work out just fine. And so the formula is going to be B1C1. Well, because I have to have one particle in each box. And so the only way it would work out is I, if this is tetraatomic, that means I'd put one blue one in each one. Yeah. And then I'd put. Well, why, how, why do you say B1C1? Like, I don't get it. Because there's one B yeah. to one C. Oh. So one to one. Can't you just say BC? You could say BC. So this last one then should actually be pretty easy, Cassidy, because we now know what everything is. A is diatomic, right? C is monatomic. Except now we have a problem, don't we, Yannicka? Because I only have two C atoms. So if I put them in my boxes here, I have nothing else to put in. <coughs> So, that's a problem. So how could I get one C, at least one C atom in each box? The C atoms have to have three in every particle. Yes, the C atoms must be tetraatomic. So that way I could get one into each. And I would have six A atoms, so then they could pair up. But then that would change the other one because if it's going to be tetraatomic here, it would have to be tetraatomic there. So that means we have to go back and fix this. And that's, again, that was one of the points of giving you this problem. Uh, Emily, is because it forces you to think like they did in the 1800s, okay? They didn't know the charges on things. They didn't know to go, oh, aluminum is a three plus. Chlorine is a one minus. Crisscross, there we go. That's our formula. They didn't know charges. The only way they could figure out a formula was to react the two things together, look at their masses. And sometimes what they got in one experiment conflicted with what they had in a different experiment. So this is one of them. After doing this one, you realize something's not right up here. So we've got to go back and see if we can fix it. How was that what charges are for? That's how they originally kind of determined charges. Now once quantum mechanics came into being, then we have a way to actually predict what things will end up being. And you don't have to do any of this monkeying around anymore. Which, to be honest, Hunter, was actually kind of more fun in the 1800s because you actually had to go in the lab and react the two things together and see what it would happen. But with quantum mechanics, we can now predict what their charges will be. Um, and you don't have to do all this stuff in the lab. So, could this work out? Sure. Because I can put three on each atom.
So that would make it then B1, C3. And now I know the formulas for all my compounds. And once I have my formulas, then I can go check to find out what the relative masses are. Remember, in part A, we found the relative masses to be B is the lightest, then A, and then C is the heaviest. So let's see if that same thing holds true when we do part B. So the six volumes of A weighs 0 0.602. And one volume of B weighs 0.295. So what I do, Nate, is I divide by the number of atoms I have. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. So I take the total mass, I divide by 12. And that's what I get, 0.501. Do the same thing for B. Take the total mass divided by my atoms, 1, 2, 3, 4. That's the mass of one B atom. So who's lighter? A or B? A. A. That's the weight of one A atom. That's the weight of one B atom. And so then let's make a nice little ratio. Divide by the smallest one of them. That will get us nice whole number ratios. And that gives me approximately 1.5. So A is lighter, and B weighs 1.5 A's. So now all we have to do, Kayla, is look at C. Is C heavier than A, or is C lighter than A? So we go to our last experiment. The mass of A is 0 0.320 grams. This one is 0 0.374. First thing we do, divide by the number of atoms. So I divide that by 6. There are 6 atoms. And that comes out to be 0 0.053. Divide this by 6 atoms because there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 atoms. And that comes out to be 0 0.062. So the A atom, the A atom is still lighter than the C atom. And then to get a nice relative table, what we do, Demi, is divide by the smallest one. So I take this. So the ratio then is 1 to 1.15. So this is the correct relative table of masses. A is the lightest element. C is the second lightest at 1.15. And B is the heaviest element at 1.5 times the weight of A. So that is the correct relative table of masses. Um, a is actually the lightest, B is actually the heaviest, which is actually pretty funny, Alexis, when you look at what we did in part A, we actually came up with B being the lightest and uh, C being the heaviest. I mean, that's pretty funny, isn't it? It's pretty I mean, funny. It's not going to lie. I, can, I can tell you guys are laughing inside how, how silly that must look now. So, um, again, if you don't quite understand this, um, I'm not going to give you something this hard on the test. I like this problem, Katie, because it forces you to go back, to go into the dark, and figure out how these guys did it in the 1800s. You know, we've got the benefit of knowing, oh, aluminum has a three plus charge. They didn't know that. We have the benefit of knowing hydrogen's diatomic. How did they figure that out? Through this process. They're like, ah, the only way this works is if this thing is diatomic. So, and that's why it took them, you know, a good 100 years or so to, to really figure all this stuff out. <coughs> so any questions on number two before we do number six? 
All right, could you read number six for us? Right. You have a chemical in a sealed glass container filled with air. The setup is sitting on a balance as shown below. The chemical is ignited by means of a magnifying glass, focusing sunlight on the reactant. After the chemical has completely burned, which of the following is true? Explain your answer. Okay, so this is actually a pretty good one because you just got done doing a lab. Let's say I've got my balance here, and there's nothing on the dish right now, Maddie, okay? There's nothing in there. The only thing inside the container is a little bit of air. All right? Would the balance have any weight on I mean, would it record anything? Depends. I did zero it out. I didn't zero it out. All I did was close the container door. Would the balance read anything? Yeah. Yes. Why? Because the air presses down on the balance. If you open up that balance door and you go or blow on it, okay, it will change the number because air pushes down on it. Okay? Um, if I took, what do I got, two, four, six, seven of these? If I took all seven of them and put them down on here, it would weigh the same as if they were up here, because they're all still pressing down on the balance. Okay? <laughs> so, conversely, if you start with your little dish down here, and you have some mass in there, and you vaporize it, because the container is closed, the mass is going to read the same. Okay, so even though you burn it, these particles are still pushing down on the plate. Now it would be a totally different scenario if you opened up the container. If you opened up the container, well then yes, they could escape and it would weigh less. But it's closed off. So the answer should be B. The balance will continue to read 250.0 grams. Another way you can think of it is nothing's getting out, nothing's getting in, so the weight has to stay the same. Okay? Nothing's getting out, nothing's getting in, it still has to be the same. So, any other questions on the homework? All right, you can shut it off. Thank you so much.